Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again. My name is Nudie, and last time I covered the most famous and infamous plays of Guild Wars 2. And now, starting today, over the next couple of months, I'll be covering the most famous guilds in the game. As voted by you guys, this series will be split into three parts, one for each game mode, World vs World, PvE, and then finally, PvP. So today, I'll be covering the World vs World guilds of Guild Wars 2, which have had large impacts on the game and the game mode itself. Those who have dominated the regions, changed the metas, and have caused the most controversy. These videos do take insane amounts of research, networking, and loads of effort to make. So if you do enjoy it, all I ask is that you consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel to show your support. I'd also like to announce that I'm giving away the legendary sword Bolt, provided by none other than the Guild MM Trading Company, the richest and by far the best trading guild in the game, led by Guild MM, Zushin and others. If you're looking to get into trading or looking to do some deals with them, definitely hit them up. I don't think I could recommend anyone above them. They do millions of gold in trades every single year and are very trustworthy. Get in touch with them. Their details will be in the description below. If you'd like to take place in the giveaway, you must be subscribed to the channel. Follow me on all social media links below. And finally, in the comments below, let me know who your favorite guild is in the video, followed by your in-game name. The winner will be announced in the next month, so get in touch. Without further ado, buckle up everybody and let's get into it. Guild Wars 2's most famous and infamous World vs World guilds. Aggression. AG is one of, if not the most, successful World vs World and GVG guild to emerge from North America, and the game in general. Do not confuse Aggression with the European guild Team Aggression, which I'll be covering later in the video. AG was founded very early in the core game when Guild Wars 2 first released, the driver and leader of that guild being Jericho Ironborn, probably the fastest speaking driver in the game who sounded like a damn auctioneer and was always screaming out Peter in relations to downstate players. <laughs> Early in the game, Aggression was a very good open field World vs World Zerg busting guild, being able to wipe out a considerably large amount of enemy forces with a smaller organised group. It wasn't until 2013 when they began GVGing actively, and they weren't quite considered the best guild in NA, let alone the entire game just yet. There were many guilds who they would go back and forth with, such as Everything Purple, Night Shift, Arkham, and a few others who were also up there. However, just as their guild name suggests, their extremely aggressive and fast-paced playstyle was rapidly developing and was beginning to edge out a lot of the competition, pretty much solidifying them as a top 2 North American guild alongside Night Shift. Before Aggression had risen as a top North American GVG guild, a guild named Redguard had previously visited North America and pretty much embarrassed all that North America had to offer. Another top NA guild named Everything Purple also visited Europe and although they performed very well, they were still no match for EU's best. North America was considered to be a huge joke in comparison to Europe's World vs World and GVG scene. Huge amounts of shit talk were put on the forums from both sides over many many months and AG took part in calling out EU's top guild at the time, Team Aggression, which I'll refer to as TA to not have them confused. Through their insane amounts of training, AG was confident they were ready to take on EU's top dog. TA, which consisted of many previous Red Guard members, came over to North America ready to fight over who deserved the Aggression name. Obsidian Sanctum queued and a stream full of thousands of players stood by to see how far that NA had progressed, all still fairly confident that the undefeated TA would be victorious. AG ended up confidently beating Team Aggression, becoming the first North American guild to beat a top European guild. Beating TA was Jericho and AG's final goal, and after doing this, they left Guild Wars 2 to now pursue other games at the time, such as Arc Age. After about a six month break, AG had returned and continued being a top guild in NA. Another powerhouse guild named Night Shift, who had also beaten TA on their NA tour, were considered to be the kings of NA at this point. Although AG was considered a close second place, Jericho and his guild still hadn't figured out how to consistently and confidently conquer Night Shift until one day they made a break. Breakthrough. Aggression was the founding guild of the pirate ship meta of 2015 that many old players will be very familiar with. It consisted of building a backline heavy guild comp including necromancers and staff elementalists, who were then shared immobilized venoms by a venom share thief. The majority of the rounds would consist of AG kiting NS through insane amounts of range pressure until they had enough downs to completely crack them. Night Shift, who by far had the most deadliest frontline melee train, were completely countered and AG's newfound playstyle would dominate them, which essentially pushed the entire game both North America and Europe to adjust and adapt to this playstyle. This new meta allowed upcoming guilds such as Syndictive to also beat powerhouse guilds such as Night Shift. AG and Jericho for this reason are North America's most famous World vs World and GVG guild. Mobile. <laughs> 
Red Guard. You guys know I can't leave out Red Guard. RG was without a doubt the best guild in the game during their time in Guild Wars 2. They were led by a hilarious yet incredibly harsh driver named Sacrix the Machine, who I covered in part 1 of Famous Guild Wars 2 players. Sacrix and his guild existed before Guild Wars 2 through the means of other games, and from what I've been informed, many of the players played the Guild Wars 2 beta in which they immediately began theory crafting and planning for their domination of the World vs World game mode. When the game released, Red Guard had a huge advantage on many of the other players and relentlessly farmed almost every guild and blob that stood in their way. I may be biased, but in my opinion, Redguard were almost solely responsible for Zerg busting guilds and skill groups existing so heavily early in the game. Many were inspired by Redguard's wrath in the many videos they would post online from them farming map queues with 15 to 20 players. I know I surely was. Members like Ogre, Lyric, Intego, Zumos, Bumpy Knuckles, and many, many others were big in pushing this sort of awesome content. It wasn't long before other like-minded guilds were forming up to challenge Redguard, such as TUP, HB, VOTF, and others. Although some of these guilds put up very good fights, RG was never shaken and they were undefeated. Many players and guilds studied Redguard, ran the same builds as them, and even watched guides and GVG reviews by Ogre, who was an RG content creator, but nobody could put a scratch on them. Even when they traveled to North America, they demolished everybody. All their skill and talent aside, another huge reason as to why RG became so famous was because of a funny compilation video put together by one of their members named Intego which highlighted the hilarious rage, singing, and screams of Sacrix and the rest of the guild. Here are some of those moments. I'll warn you now, some of these clips are very loud, so turn down your speakers just a little bit. People getting caught out of the bubble, fucking mustard fill, mustard fucking fill, serious funding, fucking scope kicks, fucking retarded. Oh, moving, 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 moving up, filling up, filling up. Oh, for fuck's sake, do some damage, 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 damage. Mustard fucking fill, who are as a motherfucker? Fucking awesome oh, fight. That. Fuck me! Fuck me! Wow, this is no, fucking hot. It's fun though. Eh? I need a I fucking really appreciate bath, the man. company. <laughs> That's losing his voice, I think. Fucking get yeah. in there! Yeah, they're not against. Fuck yes! That's the way we're being caught in the fucking it, boss. Moving down the stairs. Moving down the stairs. Let's go finish him off. Bomb in here. Bomb in here. Focus here. Focus here. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Wait the fuck up! I, I bet the French guy is like, what the fuck are they up to? Eventually, after beating everything in sight, Sacrix became the first player in the game to receive the Ultimate Dominator title for killing 250,000 players in World vs World, and he quit the game. He would return temporarily sometime later, but it never lasted too long. Last we heard, Sacrix and Redguard were waiting for Camelot Unchained to release, and uh, let's just say that was like six years ago, and we're still waiting for that to happen. Although the videos are very old, and the metas have changed so much, I do recommend all hardcore World vs World players to go back and watch those old Redguard videos, and you can get a glimpse of what it used to be like and where it all started. KISS, also known as Nosferatus Asylum. KISS is a guild led by a player named Discharged Guard, and although his guild isn't too shabby, their skill level isn't exactly what makes them famous. They are the oldest and one of the largest guilds that Guild Wars has ever seen. They've been running big and strong since the original Guild Wars game, and they still exist today in Guild Wars 2. After the original Guild Wars, many players were surprised to see KISS still exist today. They were featured by ArenaNet in the Guild of the Week articles that they used to make back in 2008, but they have existed since roughly 2005 or 6. Since coming to Guild Guild Wars, however, they seem to bump heads with some of the more hardcore World vs World and GVG guilds who don't really care much for points in World vs World, often flaming people for GVGing in the Borderlands when keeps and structures are being attacked. Because of this, they are a big red target for trolls who purposely try and piss off KISS members and make a mockery of their guild, such as this video from Heart of Thorns where their guild comp is killed by 6 players. I personally have no connection with KISS, but it seems that in European servers, people either love this guild or they love to troll them. Discharge Guard often pulls together large squads when he open tags, him and his guild have been a big factor towards points per tick and helping their servers climb the World vs World leaderboards. To have a guild stay strong for that long really is impressive and I hope to see them stick around for longer for when Guild Wars 3 releases. Kappa. Cakewalk, the famous guild full of thick girls in your area wanting to meet up. Just kidding, they're a bunch of dudes. Cake is a World vs World roaming guild made up of many Guild Wars 2 YouTubers, most notably Vans. Forgive me if I pronounce some of these wrong, but other members include Lugalix, Exe, Kaze, Yara, Touch, and previously Obindo and Tramadex, who I'm not sure are still in the guild. Cake makes compilation videos of their guild running roughly 5 to 10 players and fighting larger enemy groups. Their gameplay is great and all, but they also seem to put unusual amounts of effort into making sure their characters and graphics are very, uh, 
appealing to the eye. Cake members have often found themselves involved in some controversy over the years, which is more reason why they're pretty well known. For example, the multiple videos from Lord Heisen, dueling and hunting down Cakewalk members, making big memes and mockeries out of them, mostly Lugalix, who I've heard has quite the track record of being very toxic. The largest scandal to face fans, the most well-known member of Cake, who has the title of God of PvP, meaning he placed first in a ranked PvP season, was when he was exposed by ArenaNet for actually using match manipulation and win trading to get his top spots. He got away with this with only a three month dishonor from PvP, which many people thought was way too light. All drama aside, Cake have some nice roaming videos, both solo and group. Feel free to check them out for the gameplay, of course. Get fucking ready, get fucking ready, get fucking ready, get fucking ready, come on! Team Aggression, also known as TA. As discussed earlier in the video, Team Aggression was easily amongst the greatest World vs World guilds in the game. Mark Rox was the driver of Team Aggression and many former Red Guard members such as Kemso and Intego were also a part of TA after Red Guard and Sacrix departed the game. Team Aggression was also the home to one of the most famous PvP players in the entire game, Syndrona. All in all, TA's roster was no joke. Paired up with the incredible driving of Mark Rox, they quickly became the most dominant guild in the game, both in the open field and in organized GVGs. Before Team Aggression got stacked with these players, they started off as a much more average guild. And if you thought AG was the first North American guild to defeat them, you're wrong. Everything Purple was another top NA World vs World guild, which done an EU tour. During this time, Team Aggression wasn't nearly as experienced and they were beaten 5-0 by EP. But within about three months, Mark would acquire some more experienced players and from there on out, not a single EU guild could even challenge them. And this is when TA became recognized as a top guild and where most people think they began. On top of their GVG domination, Team Aggression would upload insane videos of them wiping huge map queues with 20 to 25 players, like it was nothing. All rocking chars with big rucksacks and smaller Asura for their backline. Everybody aimed to be like Team Aggression. After many many months of beating everybody in EU, as we know, Team Aggression done a North American tour where they were met with their first real challenge in a long time. Both Aggression and Night Shift beat Team Aggression. Now there is two sides to every story. There is no denying that both North American guilds played very well, unlike any EU guilds and the overall play style was something that TA wasn't used to. But Team Aggression called their North American tour quits early and went back to EU where they disbanded. Team Aggression's reason for for leaving NA was due to the lag they were facing in these GVGs, which they say had a huge impact on how they performed. Which I can honestly understand simply because they were under really rough circumstances. They were playing on 150 ping on a map that was queued and was being chat spammed by trolls on the Maguma server. Think about World vs World matchups where there is map queues on three servers and you lag really hard. Add chat spam on top of that in such a small zone like Obsidian Sanctum, as well as other factors such as time zone differences, it's really understandable that they didn't have the best experience. Team Aggression disbanded after this, but three months later, they returned to attend to their throne in EU. They immediately went back to their dominant status. And later on, when a North American Pug GVG team was put together and went to Europe, Team Aggression 5-0'd them with absolute ease. Some months later is when the pirate ship meta was formed by North American Aggression, and it had risen and spread to EU. North American AG was the creator, the European Team Aggression was the perfecter. They played the pirate ship meta so well. However, every guild at this time began doing the same thing, so the rounds just lasted for really, really long times with both guilds not pushing each other. Once again, Team Aggression called a break until the release of Heart of Thorns where they came back. And like many other guilds, they simply did not enjoy what the expansion had turned World vs World into and they quit the game. Regardless that they were defeated and didn't have a clean undefeated streak, Team Aggression in my opinion is the most dominant and strongest guild to exist in the game over such a long period. They were always pushing the boundaries of team play and almost never failed to impress. If you're enjoying the video so far, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Let's move on. Anguish, also known as Ash. Ash was a European guild led by a player called Enigma, the former driver of another well-known GVG guild called Lag. Ash formed after Lag had died, towards the end of vanilla Guild Wars 2 and closer to the start of Heart of Thorns, with the goal of becoming the best World vs World and GVG guild in the game. Of course, this was not a very easy goal. At the time, there were still many strong guilds present in the game, including Team Aggression. Heart of Thorns came along and Ash had their first GVG against EU's top dog, Team Aggression. This GVG ended 8-0, easily in the favor of TA. At this point, many Many people thought Ash was just going to be another lag, and like every other guild in the EU scene, which could never put a dent on Team Aggression. Instead, what happened was Enigma went back and asked for another GVG one week later. Ash came into this looking like an entirely new guild. This time they managed to push the score to 5-4, still in the favor of TA. However, this made people realize, shit, this is a guild to keep an eye on. This was the first time an EU guild had almost beaten Team Aggression. The third match of TA vs Ash once again ended with the same result, 5-4 in the favor of TA. But 
this time it literally came down to the smallest of mistakes to change his score. Here is a small clip of Roy, the well-known streamer who was a part of Ash, explaining these rounds. Wait, so I, like, this I is have, the third GVG? This is the third GVG. Okay. Um, and like, I can tell you, like, just being in TeamSpeak with those comms, it was insane. Like, every- like, I remember one round, specifically, like, one of our, our warriors, he like, I think he like, missed a banner or something. And the entire rest of GVG, he was just like kicking himself in the head because he was like, oh my god, if I didn't miss that banner, we would have won, you know, like something like that. And yeah. it was just like those ti tiny little minute mistakes that like cost a round. And again, it was 5-4, it, it was just like that's how close the rounds were, that's how even these guilds were. Now, do keep in mind, this was very early into Heart of Thorns when pretty much no guilds knew what the hell they were doing. These GVGs took place in Guildhall and people were still running Star Valleys and Thieves, which were later proven to not be very effective. The week after the third GVG, Team Aggression decided to quit the game, as did a huge amount of World vs World guilds during this time. The scene was considered to be finished, people weren't happy with the new specs and how they affected the game mode. Ash, however, was one of the guilds who stuck through it all. Some theorised that TA only quit because they didn't want to be defeated by Ash, which I personally don't think is the case, but throughout Heart of Thorns, as the meta became more solid, Ash began beating all top EU guilds, with a few close GVGs here and there with guilds such as Daisy and AMP, but they eventually were crowned kings of EU. This is when Enigma had his eyes on the big prize, to try and conquer North America, which Team Aggression was unable to do. Oddly, his biggest focus was on defeating North American Aggression, who had only just reformed and weren't considered top of NA. Over a course of 9 hours in one day, Ash GVG'd Borp, Keck, and Ag, Borp and Keck being the two best guilds in NA. First they fought Borp, who they lost to 5-0. Ash and EU guilds were still running Celestial gear on their Guardians, whilst NA had all moved over to Minstrel Guardian. After this GVG, Roy literally paid for the rest of Ash to get their Minstrel gear, and their next fight was against Keck, three hours later. The scores were tied 4-4, four and four, and in the deciding round, Enigma got pulled and won pushed. Originally, it was assumed that he was pin sniped, but Enigma was lagging and running ahead of his group, so it's likely that Keck just punished him for that. Literally within five seconds of the last round enigma died and he was lagging so badly that he was still commanding while dead before he realized he was dead like that's how bad he was lying he was dead on the ground for like a good three seconds before he realized he died without their driver in the final round ash lost to keck 5-4 finally they fought aggression who weren't fully in tune with heart of thorns yet and ash won 5-3 ash returned to eu and dominated the other top guilds such as vi and amp enigma really wanted to return to na at some point but the guild eventually died out ash returned shortly for path of fire but enigma didn't quite like the expansion and the guild died out once again tempest wolves TW is a North American guild that has pretty much existed since the start of Guild Wars 2. They have been driven by many well-known players over the years, most notably Elsvada Dodds. Earlier in the game, TW was a pretty good North American guild. They were one of the North American guilds who got to fight Redguard when they came to NA, but they were obviously run over by them. Regardless of this, over the years of the game, TW has always been a competent guild that would give good fights in World vs World. The reason I'm adding Tempest Wolves is because of the work they did in 2013, where they were a huge part in building up the Sanctum of Rule World vs World server, and they took it to the top. Many veterans will immediately know what's coming now, and that is the speech that Indo of Tempest Wolves gave to Sanctum of Rule before they they entered tier 1 vs Jade Quarry and Blackgate. The speech had a lot of passion from Indo and that is clear. Some may find it cringy or over the top, but it really does show the impact that TW had on this server when they took it to the top. I'll only play small bits and pieces of it as it has some copyrighted music in the background, but here it is. So I'm saying that face that sucker, look that bitch in the eyes, don't back down, never fucking back down. You know, our enemy may outnumber us. But we have something that they don't. We have a server that's united with each other. You know, greater than just united for PPT or united for points on a fucking board. You know, we are literally united with and for each other. You know, we got no new influxes and we went from 17 to 5 on our own. You just take, you know, each of you take one step with me. I'll take fucking five. And together we'll make the server what it's meant to be. And we'll do it the right way. Not by paying fucking guilds thousands and thousands of gold to get there. We will do it the right way, step by step, little by little, piece by piece, to build, in essence, the utopia of servers where everyone gets along, everyone works well with each other, and everyone is on the same page. So that's just a little bit of the speech. It's like a 14 minute video or something like that. So if you do want to listen to it, there's a lot more. Of course, nothing lasts forever and eventually the server had fallen, although they did have a decent run in tier one. Love them or hate them, regardless, Tempest Wolves will always be a recognizable guild in the North American World vs World servers. Bunch of random players, known as Borp. 
Borp was probably the best guild in the entire game during Heart of Thorns. Led by a driver named Viridian, they appeared out of nowhere around the middle of Heart of Thorns and just wreaked havoc. They were huge in pushing forward the strongest metas of the Heart of Thorns expansion. Viridian created Borp with the intention to change the North American World vs World and GVG scene. As most of you know, NA has never had as healthy of a scene as EU, and guild fights just weren't happening very often. He wanted to foster a more competitive scene and take players who weren't really that competitive and make them get better. Borp lived by its name. It was literally a bunch of random players from different guilds and even some new players. I was gone for a lot of Heart of Thorns but when I temporarily came back I was in a guild named Oh Boy and we were the first Obsidian Sanctum GBG that Borp had. I kid you not I almost got AIDS through my computer screen. They were extremely condy heavy and they dominated us 5-0. As time went on the only guild that would go back and forth with Borp was the other top North American guild Keck which had many GBG all-stars. But from what I've been told Borp won the majority of the GVGs. We know what happened next. Ash came to North America and got beaten by Borp and for their remaining time in the game, Borp just absolutely farmed World vs World and eventually called it quits a little into Path of Fire. Him. Him was a guild also known as Fearless during the core version of the game who rose to the top when the scene kind of already died. Ag, Nightshift, EP, Sin, many of the better guilds towards the end of the core game were on break or finished. The driver of him was a player named Faeoth who later became an ESL Pro League player when Guild Wars 2 had esports. Many would say him only became the best in NA because all the better guilds were gone but personally being in the second best guild during this time which was IX and fighting him regularly I can assure you they were a really good team. Faeoth was a dedicated driver and even when his PC broke or something along those lines happened, he was literally driving his World vs World raids and GVGs from his college computer lab. I shit you not. After some time of being at the top, him and Faeov decided to host a North American GVG tournament hoping to revitalize the scene. As mentioned, at this point the NA GVG scene wasn't very healthy. Between all the guilds, there was him, IX and Gun Squad who were expected to go the furthest. But him had previously beaten all of these guilds. They put a huge pot of gold into this tournament and were by far the biggest favorites going in and I think they knew that. Round by round they soared through to the finals knocking out the guild I was in IX along the way. The grand final was between him and Gun Squad which was a guild led by a player named Haru. Gun Squad got stacked with better players throughout the tournament and became a sudden threat. The GVG was close but Gun Squad surprised everybody including him and came out victorious. Him weren't very happy with the result and said there was outside interference. The only evidence they could support this with was one rifle auto attack on a combat log. But either way even if their accusations were right, this was something that many guilds had to put up with before Guild Horse came out. As we know, the tournament was ran by Fearless, and as far as I know, Gun Squad never ended up receiving their rewards for winning, which is quite sad. Pirate Chips, who go by the name Lays. Finally, a more recent guild, right? Lays is led by a player named Killu, and they were one of, or maybe even the strongest EU guild in recent years. Altogether, they've been around for the last three or four years roughly. They first came to the spotlight when back to back they won the first two GVG tournaments put on by Roy and Domi in early Heart of Thorns, and they showed us that they were no joke, wiping out big names such as Visceral Effect to win. They seemed to struggle a little further into Heart of Thorns though. Lays, however, was overall the most dominant a guild for Path of Fire in the European region. They had well-timed and huge hitting bombs, and the punishing nature of Path of Fire worked perfectly for their playstyle. As of recent months, another GVG tournament was ran by the European community, and Lays were going in among the favourites. They 5-0'd all but one team before entering the quarterfinals against a guild named Incendiary. After an extremely close GVG, it was a shock to see Lays lose 4 rounds to 5, but it was revealed by a Lays player named Insight that Incendiary had players on the outside of the arena, meaning they could advise their teammates through voice comms when Lays was about to open from stealth and where they were positioned, which is obviously against the rules of the tournament. Regardless, Lays copped the defeat and if I'm not mistaken, they are currently on break but do plan to return in some time. Wavy. Now that we covered EU's best Path of Fire guild, we need to cover NA's. Wavy was a group of many, many experienced North American players, including many of the best NA PvPers from Team USA such as Naru, Helio, Reckless, Shook, Steel Rage, and many other great players. The driver of this guild was a player named Max. There really isn't a load of backstory for this guild, they were just very good. They're a Path of Fire guild that pretty much just had zero competition at all, and they won the Guild Wars 2 North American GVG Season 2 with ease. It's a shame that Wavy has died just a few weeks shy of this video, and literally a week and a half after I kinda joined them, they simply didn't have much left to play for, but I really wish we could have seen Wavy vs Lays and seen how the Path of Fire giants from both scenes matched up because we really don't see North America vs Europe like we used to anymore. 
Next up, Violent Tendencies, better known as VT. VT is a North American small-scale roaming guild with many individually talented players such as Xan, Yumi, Agrio, Thorpe, LSD, on top of some others you may have seen on YouTube or Twitch. VT is another guild which has been around for a long ass time, and they are probably one of the best World vs World roaming guilds in the game, and there really isn't many of those. They all have their own YouTube channels where they mostly do solo content, but they also have some nice small-scale group stuff as well. In the core game, groups like VT would be able to annoy and harass the shit out of World vs World guild comps and take advantage of their slow paced melee comps while they gank their backline Ellie's and Necros. There wasn't much you could do about it. I strongly advise those who like roaming content to check out their videos, they're one of the few good roaming guilds left in the game, because it's a lot harder to do today than it used to be, especially with mounts. Whether you've seen their videos or fought them personally, you know that VT is full of players to be reckoned with and they're known by many for that exact reason. Last but not least, Baruch Gladiators. Jeez, I hope I said that right. We covered all the famous GVG guilds, next we have their worst enemies. This guild was simply a few trolls who would make meme world vs world videos and then moved on to trolling and interrupting GVGs. There really isn't much needed to explain as to why they're so hated, so take a look. Hello Hugo. Hello God. I know Guild Wars 2 is too easy for a great player like you, and you are tired of facing noobs 1v1, but I have a plan for you. You could fight more noobs at the same time in guild fights. But I don't have a guild. Yes you have. Okay bro. They would then ruin GVGs by messing up stealth blasts, by putting water fields over them, by adding to the fight and killing players participating in it. It was just pretty dickish overall. Look, the comedic value is there and everything, but with the scene being the way it is, trolling GVGs, it's it's pretty low and uh, for that reason, many people hate this guild and wanted to see them on here, because apparently they're very toxic in just general world vs world roaming as well. That wraps up my list. There is literally so many guilds worth honourable mentions or ones that very well deserve to have been included in this list, but many of them shared very similar stories and I wanted to keep it a little different. Just some of those honourable mentions are Night Shift who were by far the best Hammerstaff Guardian train in the game and top of NA for a long time. Visceral Effect, a great EU GVG guild, Amplified, another great EU guild, on top of VI, Driven by Fury, The Unlikely Plan, Second Law, which came after Redguard, Everything Purple, WWE. UF, Arkham, Gun Squad, Rise, Fun, Keck, who were NA's most dominant for a long time. Guys, the list literally goes on and on. Don't murder me for leaving some out. Feel free to leave some others in the comments below as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like on it. And if you really enjoyed it, then subscribe to the channel as well. Make sure you enter the Legendary Bolt giveaway by telling me your favorite guild in this video and why. The next episode of this series will be on PvE guilds, and boy, am I excited to cover some of these guilds. There are some great stories to come. Don't miss it. Love you guys. Until next time. See you all later.